keeper of Chosen Path Church and an archpriestess of the Crillon Nativist tradition. I also serve on the board of directors of Witch School International, where I am Dean of Students and Dean of Mentors and CFO. I think that's it. Okay, that's it. That's a lot of titles. It's <laughs> a lot of work. So how do you how did you get started in, on your path as a, as a witch? Um, I left the Roman Catholic Church when I was 23, when my mother was told in her last rites that she was going to purgatory for using a diaphragm. And she died begging us to pray her out of purgatory. So I left the church and started looking. And I looked for about 30 years and investigated a lot of different religions, but there was always a yes but, either politically or the doctrine or the dietary requirements, or there was always something that made me not feel 100% at home within that religion. Uh, over those 30 years, I developed a code of ethics that I lived my life by had three simple rules. The first was that I could not do harm to anyone, including myself. The second was that all life was sacred and I define life at the cellular level because cells split and subdivide and that's life to me. Um, and the third was that I had to do service, that I had to give back to the world. I couldn't just take from the world. And those are the ethics that we raised our children with, that my husband and I shared. Um, I was a Girl Scout leader, and there was another Girl Scout leader that did a Christian ministry to Jamaica every year, and I would financially assist her with that. And as I was giving her her check one year, she just was insistent that I had to be Christian because I was supporting her Christian ministry. And I tried to explain to her that I was supporting her because I loved her. And what she did with that thing that I gave was hers, not mine. Um, so she asked me, well, what are you? And I explained to her what I've just explained to you. And one of the other leaders in the fire circle piped up, I know exactly what you are. And I'm like, okay, been looking for 30 years, what am I? And she says, you're wicked. And I'm like, no, that's just something the girls are into. That's not a real religion. And she says, oh, but it is. And she recommended three books that I could not tell you the title of today. I don't remember. But I read the three books and I went over to her house and I said, guess what, Jessica? She's like, what? I'm wicked. So I became what I call a Barnes and Noble witch. I uh, camped out in Barnes and Noble. I read every book that I could get my hands on. Um, some of it spoke to me, some of it did not. Fast forward many years and I still had never been to a ritual. My husband and I were separated and one day when we were meeting for lunch, he says, so is this witch thing gonna stick? And I said, well, yeah, I kind of think it is. I haven't found a yes but yet. He says, well, I'm not so sure about this. He did the, the typical, ooh, it's dark and evil kind of thing. And I told him, don't worry, I've never even been to a ritual. And so I'm driving home and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't have to worry about him anymore. Why haven't I been to a ritual? So I started looking, uh, connecting through Jacksonville Pagan Pride Association, looking at what they had going on in the community. And there was a Carillion study group at one of the local UUs advertising that they were starting Wicca 101 study group. I thought, well, that's a good place to start. And I joined the study group 
And before I knew it, I was dedicating for clergy in the Carlian tradition. And it's just, I've never looked back. I've never had a yes but. I feel, I feel very, very blessed that I found the Carlian tradition first off the bat because the basic teachings of it really speak to me. Um, many Wiccan groups share the Wiccan Read or the Law of Three, but the Carillians have a Carillian Creed. And one of the basic tenets of their religion is that we all worship the same divine. No matter what religion you are, you just interpret it in a way that makes sense to you. So the Christians, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Wiccans, the Nordic, we all worship the same God, the divine, but we put a face on it that we relate to. And that was the thing that kind of sealed the deal for me. Because while I spent that 30 years looking at religions, often I would be going to a, a, a church or a group to learn about that religion. And all I learned at, about was what was wrong with other religions. So when I found a religion that respects all religions and all paths equally, that that was the that was the deal closer for me. That that was what really made me th go, okay, this is home. Wow! And today, now you stand as the right reverend and an archpriestess. I do, and I just don't know how that happened. It just got thrown at me one day. <laughs> um, I I always say I make a great number two. I never wanted to be a number one. I fought the ancestors for a long time about starting a temple. Um, the two two by fours just kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger that the ancestors were using. Um, but leadership is not something that I approach saying, ooh, I want to lead that. Um, I'm a doer. I see a gap. I see a need. And if I have the talents or the wherewithal to fill that, then I do. If that's leadership, then I guess I'm leadership. Um, but I don't define myself as a leader. I define myself as me, myself, and I. And if other people want to put a label on it, that that's them. You know, you can call me Ray, you can call me Jay. Just let me do the work that I feel called to do. And you're a great lover of animals. And I noticed you, you adopted a tortoise. I did, Mr. Turtle. And you, you on and off, you've adopted a number of pugs. Mm -hmm. I, well, I've adopted four or five, but I've fostered 23 so far. So you see your service as that. And recently you've done, um, I guess for the last several years, you've done a homeless um, service during the uh, wintertime. Chosen Path Church, we have semi-annual business meetings, and we always throw out service project ideas at those meetings. Um and, and we have a service project that we do every quarter, but the constant one that we do is always the homeless outreach. And this is our third or fourth year, I think. And, you know, we learn something new every year that makes it better. Um, we learn efficiency of, you know, because everything you give them, they have to carry with them to carry away. Um, we give things like sleeping bags and hats and gloves and scarves. We do two gallon size uh, zip freezer Ziploc bags full of, one of them's full of toiletries and the other one is full of things like flashlights, um, nail clippers, um, stationery, a stamped stationery with paper in it. So if they want to write somebody a letter to, to let them know they're okay, they can, uh, combs, you know, that kind of stuff. And then we serve a hot meal. Um, last year we did a, a quinoa as our protein. 
<laughs> we had we had one gentleman be very insistent that he was meat eater. So I listened, and this year we had chili. We had a vegetarian one for those that were vegetarian, and we had meat cheat chili. So um, you know, each year you pick up a little something that makes it go better. Now you actually have a physical temple, a storefront temple, I would call it. Yes, we we're in commercial space right now. Um, about 18 months ago, um, we had outgrown the space that I had in, in my house. We couldn't fit everybody around the altar uh, that we were using, which was basically my dining room table. Um, so we needed more space. So I went out and I leased a commercial, a 760 square foot commercial space, which since then, <laughs> we've outgrown. So now um, I'm, I've got about 18 months left on my lease. And we have last year, uh, it was the fall of last year, I think, when we had our semi-annual business meeting, I threw out the idea of actually purchasing a property um, that could not only serve as the temple for Chosen Path Church, but um, I wanted it to be a pagan community center as well. Um, I was let go from Bank of America after 40 years of service because I was not in the right city. Um, and they gave us an outplacement package. And part of that were, were classes that really give you thought provoking um, exercises to go through to determine, you know, where do you want to go from here? And one of the things they asked was, what is your legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? Other than your family, because that's a given. What do, you, what do you want your legacy to be? And mine was the temple and my students. Um, I'm a mentor at which school, plus I have my temple students. Um, the ripple effect that a community-based temple that's not only open to that group that owns the temple, but also open to the broader pagan community, um, the ripple effect that that has that's what I want my legacy to be. Um, our current space is used by several other pagan groups in town that are all members of uh, Northeast Florida Pagan Leadership Coalition. Um, I have a calendar out there that they can all access and they do things like initiations and book clubs and women's groups and just whatever they want to use the space for. Um, we open our doors and allow them to use the space because that's what, to me, that's what paganism is about, is providing help and support and growth opportunities to not only seekers, but other pagan groups. I guess that goes back to the tenet that all religions are equally valid. You know, I'm not just pushing Corellianism, I'm, allowing these other paths to service the community that is drawn to them. Now, I know you have a daily practice for Hecate. I have my altar in my, my um, bedroom, and on the goddess side, I have a, a beautiful statue of the triple goddess as Hecate. And on my god side, I have Lord Anubis. Um, Hecate came to me very early in my journey. I was going through a separation. I was going through empty nest. Everything that I had had for 35 years was suddenly in a blender and I didn't know what was gonna come out when it was done. Uh, and she came to me as the goddess of the crossroads. She really, she never tells me what to do but she shows me possibilities to consider. Well, have you thought about this? What if you went over in that direction? And she's not directing me in that direction, but she's directing me to think about that direction and how it could possibly 
turn out. Um, Lord Anubis uh, appeared to me at a Nephilim beach ritual. The group that was doing it, the the leader, um, it was realms of uh, sanctuary realms of spiritual growth, and the leader of that group, Dustin Goodall, follows the Egyptian pantheon, and they had invoked Lord Anubis in the circle. And suddenly, there he is, standing in my face. I'm like, oh, hello. Oh, what can I do for you? <laughs> I, had, I had never even thought about the Egyptian pantheon. And here he is in my face, and he never went away. He, he's, he, he kind of just watches over my shoulder. He's a very quiet man, doesn't talk a lot, but... The Egyptians believed that the soul was housed in the heart. And the mythology around Lord Anubis is that when you died, he had scales, which I have scales out here. Um, he had scales that would weigh your heart against a feather. And if your heart was light as a feather, you passed into the afterlife. If it was not, there was another Egyptian god that came out and gobbled up your heart, and that was it. You were done. Forever. So every morning when I light my incense and do my devotional, I place one hand on all three heads of Lady Hecate, and I place the other one on Lord Anubis, and I pray my prayer for the day. I give my thanks for, for things that are happening or the love that I am shown. And I ask them both to guide me at the crossroads and make sure that the decisions I make to keep my heart as light as a feather, that I make my decisions based on what's right to do and not on ego. So one last question for the young people that are watching this. And as you know, my audience is filled with a lot of old elders who, who are cranky about stuff, but equally so they, they, we have a lot of young people and they're always looking for a little guidance. What would you tell them to, you know, to find their path? Because it sounds like you took a long time to find their path. I do, and I regret it thoroughly. Um, I feel like I'm behind. I would make a great monk. I have so much to learn. Just put me in a cloister somewhere and let me learn everything. Um, I really feel disadvantaged that I came to the path so late. And I've taken steps to correct that for the next life cycle. Um, the Corellian tradition has an organization called World Walkers that you can work with them for your next incarnation to make sure that you're reborn into the situation you want to experience for that life cycle. I want to be born into a pagan family. Notice I said pagan, not Corellian. Um, I, I see a difference in how I read energies and how I live my life. It's progressing, but it is never as natural as someone who is raised pagan. They do things without even thinking about it. I'll never forget the time I watched Lord Don decide what dessert he wanted with energy work with his eyes closed. You know, would I ever think of that? No. Someone raised pagan? They do it without even thinking about it. So I want to become pagan in my next life cycle, early, born into it. So I would tell young people, don't waste time. Um, we never know how much time we will have in any particular life cycle. Don't let life get in the way of your spiritual growth. Um, we all get busy, we have jobs, we have school, kids, we have commitments out the wazoo. Everybody does in today's society. But make time for your spiritual growth. If you experience a religion or a group that makes you feel uncomfortable in any way, shape or form, just move on. Just keep looking because eventually spirit will lead you to the place where you can make that loving and nurturing connection with the divine where there's no yes, but it took me 30 years, but I found my no yes, but 
So don't just settle for what's convenient and around you. Keep looking. If it if it doesn't feel right, then listen listen to your gut because that's spirit talking to you. Another thing I would encourage everyone to do, but especially the younger people that have a lot more energy than I do, um, get involved. Don't, don't just wait to be asked to do something. If you see a gap that needs filling and you have the wherewithal to try to help fill that gap, Throw out the idea that you've got. Uh, throw out your availability. Throw, throw out whatever it is that will make that gap go away in your community. And just do it. Don't wait to ask permission. Don't wait for somebody to bless you to do stuff. Just, just do it. Thank you.